Television is the most important invention in communication technology to date. It has changed the way teachers teach, governments govern, religious leaders preach, and even the way we organize the furniture in our homes. Television has changed the nature, operation, and relationship of audiences to magazines, books, radio, and movies. The computer may overtake television in mass communication, but television even defines its future. Paul Nipko, a Russian scientist living in Berlin, developed the first workable device for generating electrical signals suitable for the transmission of a scene that people could see. His NIPCO disc consisted of a rotating scanning disc spinning in front of a photoelectric cell. It produced 4,000 picture dots per second, producing a picture composed of 18 parallel lines. Electronic scanning came either from another Russian or from a U.S. farm boy. Historians disagree. Vladimir Zworkin, an immigrant living near Pittsburgh and working for Westinghouse, demonstrated his iconoscope tube, the first practical television camera tube, in 1923. About the same time, Philo Farnsworth had moved from Idaho to San Francisco to perfect an electronic television system, a design he had shown his high school science teacher when he was just 15 years old. In 1927, at the age of 20, he made his first public demonstration, film clips of a prize fight, scenes from a Mary Pickford movie, and other graphic images. Farnsworth and Zwerkin spent the next decade fighting fierce patent battles in court. In 1939, RCA agreed to pay Farnsworth royalties for the use of his patents. John Logie Bard, a Scottish engineer, transmits mechanical video image. It was the first demonstration of a television system that could broadcast live moving images with tone radiation. The first known photograph of a moving image produced by Bard's televisor was of his business partner. Bard performed many experiments and contributed greatly to the field of electronic television. The Felix the Cat doll was used by NBC for over a decade in experiments beginning with mechanical television in 1928 and continue to be used to help develop electronic television. David Sarnoff and RCA introduced television broadcasting at the World's Fair in 1939. It was the first true public demonstration of television in the form of regularly scheduled two-hour NBC broadcasts. These black and white telecasts consisted of cooking demonstrations, singers, jugglers, comedians, puppets, anything that could demonstrate motion. The FCC granted construction permits to the first two commercial stations, NBC and CBS. 
World War II intervened, but technical development and improvement of the new medium continued. On Tuesday, July 1st, 1941, both stations went from experimental to commercial licenses. The first four sponsors were Lever Brothers, Procter & Gamble, Sun Oil Company, and Boliva Watch Company. Appliance sales representative and power line worker John Walson had trouble selling televisions. In 1948, he convinced his bosses to let him run a wire from a tower he erected on New Boston Mountain to his store. Word spread, and soon he wired his customers' homes to his system using coaxial cable and self-manufactured boosters. By June, he had 727 subscribers and cable TV was born. The report of communist influence in radio and television was a discreet document that some executives wouldn't admit to have seen. But Red Channels was soon the most public secret in the industry. Red Channels listed 151 men and women claimed to be linked with a variety of communist causes. Among the prominent names it listed were Orson Welles, Leonard Bernstein, Arthur Miller, Lena Horne, Edward R. Moreau, and Artie Shaw. The A.C. Nielsen Company began in 1923 as a product testing company, but soon began market research. Nielsen started reporting radio ratings in 1936 and was doing the same thing for television by 1950. CBS asked Lucille Ball to move her hit radio program, My Favorite Husband, to TV. Lucy wanted her real-life husband, Desi Arnaz, to play her TV spouse, along with other requests, but the network refused. So, Lucy and Desi borrowed money to produce I Love Lucy on their own and sold the broadcast rights to CBS. Because of Lucille Ball's shrewd business sense, the business and look of television was transformed. With the production of I Love Lucy, filmed reruns were now possible. Also, TV industry moved from New York to Hollywood, and weekly series could now be produced quickly and inexpensively. The Red Scare demonstrated television's enormous power as a vehicle of democracy and freedom. Millions watched Joseph McCarthy's investigation of communists in the U.S. Army as it was broadcast on all television networks for 36 days. Daytime ratings increased 50%. Edward R. Murrow's See It Now exposed the senator's lies and hypocrisy. Television gave the people eyes and ears and power where before they had little. This period was one of television's finest. The quiz show scandal changed forever the way networks did business. When it was discovered that popular shows like the $64,000 question were fixed, to ensure desired outcomes, networks took control of their schedules. Instead of airing advertiser-sponsored programs, TV networks bought content to fill their broadcast days and nights and paid for this programming 
through sales of 60-second spot commercials. Congress passed all-channel legislation. FCC began regulation of cable. TV changed once again with HBO National Distribution. VCR introduced in American homes. DVD player sold in U.S. stores. First digital TV broadcast. Digital video recorder introduced. Cable TV face government scrutiny. All TV stations broadcast digitally. Negative ratings growth on broadcast and cable. Broadcast and cable companies are now experiencing a decrease in customers and subscribers. Tablets are stealing prime time, the period that used to be devoted to TV, and more and more viewers are watching video on mobile devices. Even though cable TV has had its worst year ever, cable TV revenues still rise because companies charge customers more in subscription fees. Rising rates make customers want to bundle or cut the cord completely. Meanwhile, Facebook and Google have created an audience that will overtake all of TV in terms of reach. As people spend more time with digital media, advertising dollars are likely to follow that shift. Services like Netflix and Amazon Prime offering on-demand television content seem to be the way things are going. With everything so readily available, it would seem inevitable that people would forego scheduled viewing in favor of on-demand viewing. Missing a television show has become an outdated concept. You choose what you want to watch, when you want to watch it.